This right here is the one that is basically stripped out. It gets to a point it's hard to turn and then it just skips. I can turn it by hand infinitely and it doesn't matter. If I turn it counterclockwise I get a teeny teeny tiny bit of bite just enough to kind of get it up and then from there I can pull it out by hand. That's not good. So let's get in and fix this, shall we? I'm not sure if you can see what I'm talking about very well, but as soon as I start going around like this and picking it off, you see how the aluminum threads are just coming off. Sometimes you can just squeeze it like that once you got it broke down enough and you can just unscrew it just like it's a nut. There you go. Well this is the kit right here. These are the inserts. This is the tool that you use to install them. And then this is the tap that you use to create the threads to put these in. So getting into this thing is a pain in the arse. But that's how you do it. You want it to be able to reclose so that you don't lose it everywhere. And you want to maintain the packaging and the labeling so it's like that in the toolbox. So make sure you open it correctly. Uh, once you do, and, and you need the packaging because it says what drill bit diameter you need. You need to have something that is a quarter inch to be able to get it in there, right? Drill size, one quarter, and it doesn't say inches anywhere, which drives me crazy. You need units of measurement, <laughs> not just a number. So this is what they look like. So you can see that our bolt fits into these just fine. It's just like the aluminum piece basically that came off. So here's the infographic that comes with the card. This is that same card that we're trying to save with the packaging. You'll recognize it from the beginning of the video. So you open it up and it basically explains how to do everything. You'll notice it says do not go sideways with your drill bit. Being perpendicular to the work is absolutely key to having this turn out properly. So this lines up the helicoil so that it comes out just perfectly straight to go into the hole. That's what that's about. So when I studied physics in college it taught me the importance of units. Why they don't have an inch mark or say inch just like I say it drives me crazy but I got a quarter inch bit here and so just like in those labs in science class you got to ask yourself, is that reasonable? Is it reasonable to use a quarter inch bit for this? So when, we, so when we line this up, you can see that the threads are just a little bit past quarter inch. So the first order of business, of course, get the valve cover back off. I'm going to create kind of like a funnel with an opening and a hole, just like a surgeon does to make sure that foreign bodies and stuff don't get into the engine. I'm going to brass brush it so I've got something good to tape to. I'm going to use some masking tape and create a hole that I'll work through through the masking tape. And we're just going to clean it so that the tape has something to stick. And just cut a big enough hole to where it's going to have an opening the size of this and then I'll let the tape do the rest of the work. And I really want the tape to secure to here. And then I'll use a screwdriver or something and poke or just go nuts with the drill bit there. This is that new cool stuff from 3M. They sent me some samples to try and it's an edge lock that just really, really holds an edge. So I'm just going to work that. I've got a really clean surface. I'm just going to work it on there. Next I'm going to take a razor blade and just kind of go around the corner of this hole. I'm just going to use a Q-tip and just dip this. I don't want that brake cleaner or oil or anything to mess up my adhesion. I want that to really hold. It's like my saving grace to keep stuff out of the engine. There we go. Of course I've got my safety glasses on. If you don't believe me, they're right here. I'm going to just align the drill bit with the hole. And I'm looking at the back side of the drill. So I've got my elbows and my knees rest against the car to just kind of brace up, just kind of anchor in. I'm looking at the hole and it looks like I'm not going to have much to drill. But I just want to make sure that the angle of the drill bit and everything is in alignment. I'm just going to drill it out like that. Go a little bit deeper here. It's probably all that's needed right there. Make sure it's clean. It's like watercolor painting. Less is more. <laughs> Kick yourself out. Get out of there. Don't overwork it. It'll get too big. Now I'm going to take a piece of extra paper towel and just kind of flick some things away. All of these little shavings, they love to stick to a Q-tip. There we go. 
Just brush it off. I'll sweep it off the floor later. Remember, aluminum conducts really well, so make sure you're not getting it into any electrical whatever around your alternator or battery. Not the end of the world, but we're smart. Use it. So our hole's nice and cleaned out. Now we're ready to tap it. In this case, an 8 millimeter hex socket fits fine. You can see it shouldn't, but it does. So we'll go ahead and shove that up in there nice and snug. We'll align this with that same angle. Um, if you want to put some oil on it, it's a good idea, but this metal's so soft and then I don't want to mess up my tape, so I'm going to go against better judgment and not oil it. If it were steel or anything else, I would definitely have lots of oil here. So I'm looking really straight this way. So with aluminum, you can pretty much run for it. If I go in a circle, it seems like I wobble a lot. It's not as smooth. I have to really concentrate. So when you get to the bottom, you need to be sensitive to it and you need to stop. If you keep going, you're gonna rip all of your new threads you just made right up. You don't want sloppy threads. All right, at this point, I'm gonna get rid of the ratchet and turn it by hand. Top's getting sloppy. So there's the threads that we have. We're gonna chase it with a Q-tip. So all of that metal that we just cut to make those threads needs to come out. Counterclockwise, tap. Stab, counterclockwise, tap. Over and over, get her done. Look down the hole and it's just packed. We're gonna need a vacuum. So let's look in the hole, see what we got. So looking down the hole, you can see there's still a little bit of stuff in there. But for the most part, we're looking pretty good. Uh, the rest of the work area is clean, except for an initial shaving that fell in there. You can see that one right there. That was from when I went to pull the bolts back out to get the valve cover off. The time has come to load this son of a gun. So right out the gate, the first thing I do if I've got a brand new one, because these are plastic, sometimes they're not cast exactly perfect so I'll just chase the threads with one of these and this will save you a ton of grief I'm gonna say the plastics never very accurate but if you run it through with your tap you'll find that it works way way better it's kind of stretchy I mean it's uh, got a little bit of give to it and you get a lot of drag so at the last just be real careful so here's what you do uh, clean it up make it so it's a good tool uh, you put the tang with the little break mark at the bottom of the G in there. Doesn't matter the orientation this way, just so long as that tang's down at the bottom. I said, <laughs> double check it, make sure you're looking good. Now this is uh, steel, so you can turn this with the tool pretty well. Uh, this thread's inside the helicoil, and then what you'll find is it'll bottom out. There's a little uh, part you saw I just interface right there. So you just screw it down through. Now I can do this with my fingers because I chase the threads on this. Uh, if you rely on it the way that it is, you hear it squeak, it's tight. So you want to have two threads hanging out like that. And then you hold the whole thing by the tool and you just start it just like a bolt or something. Um, two threads into the thing. And once you're two threads in, go a little bit with this. Make sure you're nice and snug, nice and level. And then just run it all the way through, down the hole, into the hole and then just snap off the end or just uh, if it bottoms out that's fine too. Start it in there and then continue. That's working. Boy it used to be I could start these by hand it was a piece of cake. I don't know if they're just tighter tolerance now or what but never used to need that tool. So I had it hanging down in case you didn't see, just a little bit. And then I turned the whole tool into it. Well, it's really springy now. Let's go ahead and pull out. Let's see if we can get this to go far enough to do any good. It's got to be able to bottom out. 
it's holding fine and it goes all the way I can pull on it I think we're good let's see if it comes out with it that'd be bad and it doesn't come out with it that's good kick butt it's been a while since I've done one of these especially in a tight area where you don't want to contaminate but that's how you do it so we've got our valve cover in I've got the gasket all situated and happy I got all these bolts started and then I take this guy and I go to put it in and guess what happens gosh dang it works like a charm I had to go in there didn't I so I hold this down I snug this guy snug this guy and start in the middle and work your way out right and then I go back to center just snug them up a little better like that all right, let's mean it. Perfect. And then if you have the power of OCD, take it down until you fill it bottom and snug. Bottom and snug. Moment of truth. Bottom and snug. I was extra careful, but you would be too. Bottom and snug. It's not as clean bottom and snugging this one as it is the rest of them. You can tell something's different. These all get happy. I don't like those touching. You don't want the grit and mineral and whatever getting into it. Spark plug wires are like little kids. The less touchy-touchy the better and the quieter and more efficient everything goes. Thanks for tuning in and watching my video. If you like this video, if you want to learn more about fixing cars, subscribe to the channel. You can click on the little square at the bottom or it says subscribe. Either way it doesn't cost you a thing and it'll show up in your feed when you log into the YouTube. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. Bonus footage at the end. If this were a G, it'd be at the bottom of the G. There's a little indentation, and this will break off and fall into the bottom of the bolt hole if it's needed. If it's bottomed out at the bottom, it just stays there. Uh, but anyway, that's the way that works. But if you push on that, I mean, it just, it stretches out, and instead of being one thread per millimeter, it's a lot more than that. You can see how it's kind of stretching it out there. You don't want that. So just twist only. Vice grips work, uh, pliers work, a small crescent wrench works. I'm sure there's a socket for that on this planet somewhere. I don't have one. Uh, that's just how it works. You see how it just starts to get crazy? See how it gets inconsistent there? And that's why you just do it a few threads. Again, if I just twist it, it'll come through. Anyway, it takes a little practice. Hey, while you're here, do me a favor. Smash that like button.